So talk a little bit about how you got into energy. What were the key kind of moments during that or the key pieces you were working on that kind of really made you fall in love with the field or, or realize the potential of what you could do here? And then, and then let's get into the Center for Industrial Progress, what you've done, what you've achieved and, and where we are. But let's, let's first do the institute years. So in 2000, I mean, the, the very beginning was in, in 2006, late 2006, I got really interested in the case of Enron uh, because I had heard from, I forget, I forget what had happened, but I had gotten the suspicion that it, it was being misrepresented. And I think what happened is at first, I had totally bought into these accounts that I read. And then I read some contrary accounts and I thought like, oh, these contrary accounts make more sense. And, and yeah. interestingly, just to connect to today, this is really motivates me for a lot of human flourishing projects, which is what, how do you differentiate uh, when we're pursuing human flourishing, real knowledge from non-knowledge, I guess we could call it fake knowledge. Yep. And it just, my ability to be duped was really intriguing to me. And then there was this potential that particularly this guy, Jeff Skilling, was um, innocent and I got the opportunity, it was secret at the time, but I can say now I got the opportunity. I was pushing on this hard enough and no one else was that I got uh, mm -hmm. I got to go interview him. And I remember you said like, if you get this interview, if, if he'll agree to it, like you'll pay for it, which at the time is, it's funny to think that's a big deal, but it was a big deal because yeah. I was not gonna afford a flight to, and, and the time off. And so I went to Houston, I interviewed him for 12 hours and I was incredibly impressed and I started working on it. And what happened was I just did not understand energy at all. And yeah. so, so much of it was technical stuff about energy. And I just had this suspicion that he was being misrepresented, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't work it out. I wanted to write a book on it and I just couldn't make it happen at the time. I mean, sure other, other undeveloped abilities of mine contributed to that, but nevertheless, I couldn't do it, but I just remember that. But then I ended up one, one work product I took out of that was I, I taught a class at the Objectives Conference in 2007, it is 2007 this time, called uh, The Media's Fraudulent Accounting of Business. And so I wrote, I talked about Enron and I talked about uh, Standard Oil and I talked about Michael Milken. Yep. And in researching Standard Oil, I had to learn about what was the oil industry like before Rockefeller so I could understand his contribution or lack thereof. And it turned out to be a huge contribution. And then in understanding the early market, even before oil, I had this realization that, wow, this is, broadly speaking, energy, this is the industry that powers every other industry. And I had never, even though it sounds obvious, I never appreciated, wow, this is fundamental to so much, which means that in terms of, as an applied uh, philosopher, in terms of applying philosophy, like if I could help clarify this, that would be a really big deal. Yeah. And then I read the prize by Daniel Jurgen in, in 2008, yeah. which I've come to know him since. And I think I've told him this, I would read about the historical events in the oil industry. And I remember thinking, oh, I wish I was around then when they were screwing up property rights and screwing up foreign policy. And I thought, well, I can be around now. Yeah. Yep. And I ended up teaching a course in 2008 in, uh, at, at Ocon there on the, the triumph and tragedy of the oil industry. And I, got, I really enjoyed that. That was one of my most enjoyable moments. At ARI, and I, I was able to pick it up pretty quickly, like surprisingly quickly. I think in part because having a good understanding of philosophy, I was good at identifying good thinkers, and then I would study the good thinkers very deeply instead of just being snowed by a bunch of mediocrities and taking forever. So there's this one guy, Peter Beckman, who had a, a newsletter called Access to Energy and wrote a book called The Health Hazards of Not Going Nuclear. And uh, I just inhaled him. And then I was a different animal on the end of that uh, than entering it. And then that's when I got, that's when I got into it. I guess the other thing that, that was the positive of getting enthralled with energy. There was also the concern about particularly global warming. And I remember we would have discussions of that in the Institute before yeah. I got interested in energy because Keith Lockich, who has a his background as a physicist was researching it. And I remember he said, importantly, well, we, we can't just, even though there's a lot of statists here and environmentalists, we can't just write them off as wrong about this issue unless we investigate the issue. And at the time he was saying, well, there, there might be some evidence they're right about certain things. And I remember feeling confused and also scared, like, well, okay, we really need this energy, but then is this causing a big problem? And how do I think about it? And, and I didn't have the question at the time, but it, it ultimately amounted to how do what how do human beings flourish in energy and that was a very difficult kind of uh, question and i think of subsequently all my work um, has amounted to 
figuring out, using certain frameworks to figure out how humans can flourish in energy, most notably having a human flourishing standard yep. and then looking at the facts with even handedness and precision about costs and benefits, that's part of it. And then the other part, in addition to getting clarity myself about what human flourishing means in energy has been figuring out once I'm convinced of something, how do I persuade others of that? And I think of it's going to be important going forward because I think of human flourishing project as, as a broadening, trying to take some of those frameworks, help people get clear on what does human flourishing mean in other areas, working with experts and working also with just regular people to help them have frameworks. Yeah. Like what does human flourishing mean in, in any area? What, what general things can you do to figure that out? And then also for the people I think are experts and the people doing a lot of good who are not being very persuasive, how do we help them stand out from the crowd? So those are those were the, in retrospect, that's what I was doing in energy. I had no idea at the time that it had that logic to it, yeah. uh, but now it feels very clear that those are the two questions I was, I was grappling with. Good, so I'm 